welcome back now in this video in continuation of instruments various instruments used in surgery the second part the basics will quickly go through the quick identification for the purpose of ease discussion obviously the first thing in instruments during your exam and your day to day use in medical science this quick identification with few uses and details how to identify the instruments uh, this video is going to be very important very helpful for all of you so let's start with the discussion quick identification i have given this video the topic the heading Uh, you already know this the mail id any any problem that website url whatsapp or instagram you can contact me okay this is the first uh, instrument very commonly seen by all of us in any surgical or medical speciality the mosquito forceps right and in mosquito forceps just focus on two important things this one the tip part this is the joint right this one and the second important thing is the presence of lock the lock and Tip like this with serrations and small in size is known as mosquito forceps, right? And as you already know, the fulcrum is in the middle. That's why it's a type one lever, right? Type one lever means whenever you are applying force over this ring in this direction. the part connected with this one this prong this one it will move in this direction right so the force of direction is in the opposite direction if we are moving like this we are applying force like this the moment is just in the opposite direction all the type one lever instruments surgical instruments this is very important characteristic so this is mosquito forceps the use we will discuss in another video this video very quickly we'll just go through the identification part and few of the instruments is yes, i have explained here also and multiple revisions will make you perfect at least in surgical instruments identification and they uses so this one was mosquito forceps there is another important forceps another important instrument the lister sinus forceps always please pay attention to the name of the instrument lister sinus forceps lister sinus forceps again just focus on the tip part the tip is you can see here a long with small serrations and here is the joint and again the same type one lever but important thing is i have drawn here two circles absence of lock there is no lock here right so long slender tip with serrations with no lock and appearance like this the instrument known is known as lister sinus forceps what are the uses used for incision and drainage like in hilton's method of incision and drainage this lister sinus forceps sometimes can be used for nasal packing packing and important thing is there is no lock right so any instrument looking like this with no lock is lister sinus forceps it is also known as in india it's six month forceps 
if somebody is not going to identify this one he or she may have to repeat the session so please identify at least this instrument lister sinus fossil then the next one is proctoscope sheath proctoscope sheath looks like this one this part goes inside the anal canal after making the patient in a suitable position we'll discuss it in some other video the per rectal examination but as far as the subject of topic of this video is concerned just try to identify this is proctoscope sheath used in per rectal examination proctoscopy examination and through this portion we throw a light and we can visualize the thing after insertion of this proctoscope sheath this is the handle with the help of which we are holding this instrument this one but during insertion to avoid anal trauma we use proctoscope insert this is a proctoscope insert and area from this place to this place it goes inside the sheath this one goes inside this and this part is coming out of that sheath and it's a traumatic non traumatic it is not going to damage the anal mucosa and this is the handle of this proctoscope insert so this instrument and this instrument they are used with each other routinely used along with each other combinedly they are used proctoscope sheath and proctoscope insert right and you must have seen this instrument during your examination also right so next one is mesenbaum dissection scissors mesenbaum dissection scissors it looks like this one this is a plated rings are there the straight the distal end the sharp straight scissor this type of scissor will mesen bomb dissection scissors again the joint is here and whenever we are applying force in this direction this prong is moving in this direction so again opposite so lever one type one lever is this one mesen bomb dissection scissors is another variety of scissors lister scissors or bandes scissors a more stout one as compared to mesen bomb scissors and it is usually used to cut the plaster dressings right lister scissors or lister bandages bandes scissors here you can see here this is the joint the fulcrum this is the distal end and this is the rings these are the rings the proximal end and whenever we are applying force in this direction the prong is going to supposed to move in this direction so again this is yes you already know that type 1 lever then kelly's forceps kelly's forceps looks like this so almost similar to the what 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 is called medium sized artery forcer serrations are there here is the, the fulcrum and there is presence of lock so any instrument that is without lock that was without lock is that was lister sinus forcer right this is kelly's forcer lock is present kelly's forcer commonly known as we are uh, routinely saying it like uh, medium artery forcer right medium size and lahes forcer long one the lahes forcer again serrations the long distal end here is the joint right and here is a lock the large artery large size artery was the lahes forcer this is lahes right angled forcer 
right angled word is important. Lahe's right angled forceps. You can see here. Lahe's right angled forceps. Here again, you, are, you can see the presence of lock. Here is the joint. The long distal portion and then then this angle is 90 degree, right? So this is lies right angled forceps. We'll discuss the uses of all these instruments. Just try to identify the instruments first, right? Lies right angled forceps. Next video, we'll discuss the uses of these instruments, whatever we are just naming here. Yes. You desired and now we are having a slide with Lahe's right angled forceps uses. This uh, Lahe's forceps is used for surgical dissection and hemostasis. It is also used for uh, passing sutures in deeper reasons to hold a peanut swab and another important Variant is the his right angle forcep. What is this his right angle? The longer version of lies. The length is around 20 centimeter. This if the lies forceps we are going to stretch it long, make it long, 20 centimeter, then it will be no, called as his right right angle forceps. His right angle forcep. If the angle this curve is not at right angle simply if you can see the shadow here if it is not right angle it's looking like this angled forcep is there but not right angle this is known as mixtures forceps right not right angle this is known as mixtures forceps so lie is right angle forcep for passing sutures in deeper regions for surgical dissection and maintaining hemostasis to hold a peanut swab. These are the uses of Lahe's right angle forcep. If long, known as his right angle forcep. If curved angle is there, not right angle, it is known as mixtures forcep. Right. The other instrument is Satinsky forceps. Satinsky forceps just Focus on this distal end here. You can see, and the presence of lock is there. Here is the joint. You can see this curvature, then again another curvature angled, and then again another curvature. Right? So, one turn and second turn. These type of Forceps are known as Satinsky forceps, used for vascular surgery. It can be used as a vascular clamp also, right? So Satinsky forceps. Then this is Coacher's forceps. Coacher's forceps again. You just focus on this, the tip. There are tooth with serrations, serrations you can see from here to here, and there are tooth. Teeth are present here, and here is the joint, and here is the lock. These are rings, right? So, coaches forceps. Where it is used? Obviously, one I'm telling you, other uses we'll discuss later on. Can be used in uh, thyroidectomies and hold some tougher structures. So, coaches forceps. Scotches forceps was designed and named after a surgeon, right? And evil coaches, and he was the first surgeon to receive a Nobel Prize for his work on thyroid. So, coaches forceps. And next is Toothed dissecting forcep. Toothed dissecting forcep. Let's focus on this tip. 
This is the tip used for dissection purpose. Toothed dissecting forceps. Here you can see we are applying force in this direction and this prong is again moving in this direction. It means same direction of force. So this is these type of instrument they are type two level type two level force in the same direction right toothed dissecting forceps another one is adsense pickups slender one the smaller distal end slender distal end the plane without any tooth is the classical Edison pickups and variant of toothed variants are also available and you can see it looks like somewhat this Edison's pickups why how it is used it is used to hold delicate tissue for traction and counter traction during any dissection process it is having transfer serrations and tips to hold better but usually these adsense pickups classically they are non-toothed. Nowadays toothed variants also they are available and toothed variant like this here you can see toothed variant. These variants can be used to hold tough structures like sheets and thick fascia. Adsense pickups very commonly used in plastic surgery and our day-to-day -day general surgery work also. Then DBKS forceps. The Becase forceps classically used in cases of vascular surgeries. Just focus on the tip and here you can see the tip. The characteristic longitudinal serrations here you can see. Here you can see. Small with two longitudinal groups which hold the vessel without crushing. This is important. Any any force that is being used for vascular surgery it should not crush the vessel wall. So this is this has been designed like that. It is not going to crush the vessel, vessel and that's why it is very frequently used in cases of vascular surgery. D BKS forceps. D BKS forceps. It is very good idea, it is an important idea to hold with adventitia and it is the holding is to avoid damage to the endothelium of the blood vessel. So D Bakay's faucet used in vascular surgery looks like this one, right? Could be angulated also, it could be straight also. Obviously, without any tooth at the tip, only longitudinal serrations are there. Then a needle holder, Mayo Hagar needle holder. Again, focus on this presence of lock. Here is the fulcrum or joint. And here is the tip. Here tip, you can see the presence of an eye. A depression is there along with serrations. Right? On both the jaws. This is Mayo Hagar. Then Joel's thyroid retractor. As the name suggests, used to Retract the tissues during thyroid surgery. Jaws thyroid retractor. The help of this lock can be released from here, both the sides, right? And with the help of this knob, you can adjust the distance between the retracted part. So jaws thyroid retractor. This is bell for self-retaining abdominal retractor. Once applied, it is going to self-retract the things. It will keep the things retracted. You don't need to apply the force of and on. So that's why these type of retractors, they are known as self-retaining abdominal retractor. Details we will study later on. Just try to just identify the things. Balfour self-retaining abdominal retractor. It is having a body starting from this place, coming over this. Just exclude this longitudinal part. Again, this this one and this one, this one. This is the 
the body part of Balfour cell retaining abdominal tract. And this one is the blade, blade part, this one, right? So we'll discuss it later on in detail. Balfour self retaining abdominal retractor. You must have seen this blade alone. So don't get confused with that. It is going to be a, some sort of other named retractor. It's a part of blade, part of Balfour self retaining abdominal retractor. Then weight liner self retaining retractor. The long blades are there and it is usually used in cases of orthopedic surgery, commonly used for retracting tissues. Wet liner, self retaining retractor. And force can be applied from here and you can see the lock system, right? Which type of lever is this one? Okay, right. Type one lever, force and motion in opposite direction okay wet liner then this is journey's non-self retaining retractor this non-self word is important you will have to apply force every time whenever you are using this type of retractor that's why it is non-self retaining right journey's non-self retaining retractor you can see there is this one in and this is Biprong is there, bifurcation is there at this end, and this shadow you can appreciate. The here is the hollow in this place. Instrument is only this much. This shadow is clearly showing us that there is a hollow here. Very good picture somebody has taken, one of my students. Thank you. <laughs> So this type of retractor is a journey's non-self retaining retractor. Then Langenbeck's, this is Langenbeck's retractor. Again, non-self retaining, a long one. Again, it is hollow from this place to make it lighter, lightweight, Langenbeck's. And then well, this one is Divers, Divers retractor, very commonly used during abdominal surgeries, Divers retractor. From here, you are going to hold the, this retractor and this portion is going inside the cavity. And this is Morris retractor. This, is, this portion is going inside the abdominal cavity and this is the handle by which you can hold from this place. And this is again hollow here to make it a lightweight. This is Morris retractor. Another variant is also available of Morris where we are having two blades each side. Here also we are having blade. This variant is also available but what you have seen is commonly seen in Morris retractor. Having one blade at one end and another one is to hold the retractor. Another, this is anal probe. One of the miscellaneous instrument, anal probe. You can use the, the distal end and the long Cylindrical like structure, small, thinner one. This is basically used in cases of calibrating the anal fistulas, the perianal fistulas, the anal probe, right? And this is very flexible. You can just mold it in any direction, whatever direction you need it, is anal probe. This is Bart Parker handle. In short, it is known as BP handle. From here, you are going to hold the, this handle and this is the area where the surgical blade is going to be mounted over this place and now this instrument can be used to cut the tissues, making a various incisions. You must go through the incision, various incision videos present in the playlist and later on we'll discuss those incisions also if required. So this is BP handle, Bart Parker handle. Two numbers are available, number three and number four. Number three for surgical blades, less than 15 number. And number four for surgical blades, 20 and more than 20 number. And this is skin grafting knife. This is skin grafting knife. 
here is the blade here where you are going to put the blade here in this place this is the handle you are going to hold this instrument this handle and the skin graft can be harvested from this place right throughout this so a skin grafting knife this is desjardin forceps just focus on the tip part important thing is there is no lock again so it's the second instrument you are going to see here apart from scissors so if i can enumerate the instruments without lock one is scissor the second one is lister sinus forceps third one is desjardin's forceps here you can see right this is the tip you can see here and this is hollow why hollow to let the stone fit this at this place to hold the stone more securely while removal of the stone from the common bile duct this desjardin forceps is used it has a, a screw joint these forceps they have a screw joint with a tip designed to formally hold the stone you can see and a presence of an screw a presence of a screw here right a screw joint there are no serrations here you can see there are no serrations on the tip no serrations but they have a central fenestration central opening is there and it helps in lodgement of stone here used to extract the stones from cvd already told you that was desjardin forceps commonly used for cvd stones these are randall stone holding forceps commonly used in cases of renal stones you can see a set of various sets of uh, randall's stone holding forceps the angle is different in each case you can see i'm just drawing the angle part it is be becoming acute sort of thing right and these are the ring and here is the joint throughout okay depending on the situation of the calluses present in the kidney these forceps can be used to retrieve the stones during pyelolithotomy or open nephrolithotomy sometimes so these randall stone holding forceps they are very much similar to the desjardin's forceps but they are having serrations on the tip and they have curved working ends these two points are different from desjardin curved working ends and they are having serrations working ends in various angles available and angle they may range from 60 degree to 270 degree another important question for mcqs and these angles they facilitate the approach and removal of stones from calluses and presence of serrations they provide a better grip for harder renal calculi the renal calculi they are usually harder as compared to cvd stones right so it provides a better grip so serrations and curved working ends these two points they are differentiating these randall stone holding forceps from desjardin clear otherwise the same thing these randall stone holding forceps they are also not having any lock right so these these instruments they do not have lock so as to prevent the injury during stone removal prevent the injury at the local site right so that's all in this video i hope this is helpful for all of you so see you in the next video the next part some other instruments thank you